Hello and welcome in to a run I created an excuse to finally do my first playthrough of Gen 6. We're tackling a randomized hardcore Nuzlocke with only status moves. To clarify, all Pokemon, both Wild and Trainers, are fully randomized, and there's no logic that guarantees I get status moves or even Pokemon that are viable for this run. Any encounter, even early on, can give me a Pokemon that knows zero status moves and doesn't learn any useful ones, making them essentially useless except for maybe swapping in to tank damage. The only exception to that rule is the starters. I randomized these only for mons that learned a viable status move by level 5, because otherwise I would have just kept restarting when I saw the starters until it randomly managed to give me a viable one. As for rules, we're following the standard hardcore Nuzlocke rules, meaning set mode, no items, and no overleveling. If the level cap seems a tad weird, I apparently slightly increased the levels a bit on the gym leaders, but this wasn't really intentional. I just didn't feel like fixing it after I started the run and realized it was broken. So here are the level caps from my run, which are roughly 10% higher than standard. And with that, we can finally begin. Except, kinda, beginning this run is a bit tricky. See, even though some Pokemon do get status moves, it doesn't mean they're a good lead. For example, getting a move like Supersonic means we can clear fights with it, but the 55% accuracy makes it difficult. Luckily on attempt 1, I got a Phantop who knew Confused Ray, and after getting lucky with the confusion hits, I made it through. The difficulty carries through the early levels and potentially into later depending on learn sets. This actually ended my first attempt before I even made it to the forest. This Zora just happened to have foresight. I chose Phantom out of the starters to prevent things from being able to hit me with normal types since it was Ghost, and a lot of mons only learn normal type moves at low levels. On top of it knowing foresight, it only hit itself in confusion once. On attempt 2, things went better and I made it up to the first gym, though I was still stuck with only Confuse Ray. I was lower level and made the mistake of leveling on a trainer instead of a wild Pokemon and got completely swept by an Aurorus. Attempt 3, I made it into the gym and to the leader after learning to avoid trainers for leveling and playing Confusion carefully. Unfortunately, I once again still only had Confuse Ray and didn't get lucky, so I completely wiped on the gym leader. Attempt 4, though, started strong. Celebi was in the randomized starters and this meant access to Leech Seed. My first encounter was a Tangrowth, which didn't actually have much of the time, but was promising for the later bits of the run. Unfortunately, I got greedy and tried to grab the capture in Route 22. In order to get to a patch of grass, you need to beat a trainer on this route, and they just happened to give a lot of experience, so it overleveled Celebi. The capture in this route was Joltik, and my forest capture had been a centret. Since Celebi was overleveled, I couldn't use it and had no status move for the gem, so back to the top once again. Attempt 6 was promising. I had gotten a Venonat and a Meganium who knew status moves. Training before the gym leader was extremely tough, featuring its Viper and Vileplume, which was quite unfortunate. See, I only had Poison Powder and Supersonic to status my opponents, and Poison Powder wouldn't work here. While Supersonic was still viable, I had a lot of issue getting the Viper to hit itself, so I almost lost Venonat just going through Viper. This meant that Vileplume was something I had to PowerPoint stall until it struggled itself. Despite being a 30 minute ordeal with me breaking out calculators to live with literally red HP on every Pokemon left and losing Drowsy, I did actually beat them. After that, I breezed through for a while and their one was really shaping up. Then I hit Gym 2 where I ran into a Durant. I didn't have anything to outspeed it and it kept wiping everything on my team. I'm pretty certain it was a Hustle Durant that just never missed, but I'll never know because that attempt wiped and I had to go back to the start. Attempt 7, once again a Celebi start, and this time quite rocky near the beginning. My first capture was Machamp who didn't really learn status moves, and my first trainal battle was against a Blaziken. Luckily since it was low level it didn't know many strong moves, so Celebi was able to defeat it. Into the forest and I found a Seismitoad which actually was great for my team. The typing was different and a new Supersonic so I had an alternate to Leech Seed for Grass Pokemon. Even better, the capture after the forest was a Bulbasaur which was bound to be good at later levels. Unfortunately though, I had a tough choice. If I tried to level my new members on wild Pokemon, they'd likely get taken out, and I wasn't having any luck finding encounters I could take down with Supersonic without risking a death. So I flipped a coin and decided to challenge the trainer before the gym, despite most of my team being low level. You see, I needed to prevent Celebi from getting much XP since I had been carrying my team with it and it was already near level cap. This trainer pulled out a leap, which meant I couldn't leech seed it. Since Super Miss, my Seismitoad, was quite low level, I needed to be sure I'd KO it if I brought him out. So I used Machamp to set up minus 6 defense with Leer. 
After scoping out its moveset and running it out of Astonish power points, I swapped in, and oh boy was it a good thing I stalled the Astonishes, because I missed five Supersonics in a row before finally setting Confusion, which took it down. Those levels got leaped to Bulbasaur, and Super Mesh strong enough to train against wild Pokemon for experience. I could have used Rare Candy to level as some people do, but I felt that it would be cheating for the purpose of this run. See, unlike a Nuzlocke where you can use normal attacks, wild Pokemon can and will sweep your whole team or just take out members that can't beat the enemy. On my second attempt, I lost my forest capture to an Arena Trap Diglett right after catching it. Arena Trap prevents you from escaping and Mahariyama didn't know any status moves, so due to cases like that, I decided to continue getting experience on the wild Pokemon to truly see the difficulty this run had to offer. After getting close to level cap, I went into the one required fight, managed to take down the Hound Hour and Dusk Noir with Leech Seed. And with the Gym Leader unlocked, I was feeling pretty good. Bulbasaur had learned Leech Seed as well, and if I leveled in the Gym Fight, he'd acquire Poison Powder and Sleep Powder. Luckily, the Randomizer RNG was good to me, as the Gym Leader only had a Furret and Chansey, which proved to be quite easy to take down. I hadn't gotten the Route 22 capture beforehand, though, and had a very scary encounter here. The trainer had a Rayquaza, but luckily it didn't get many moves this low level and I had a decent level advantage. So what was my reward on this route? It was God. Absolutely stellar capture, right? Wrong. The only status move it gets from leveling that would give me any offensive capability is Parashong, and it doesn't learn it till 90, which we don't actually make it to in this run. I also missed my encounter on the route past Santaloon by accidentally clicking run instead of bag. The RNG got even worse when I ran into a Chikorita trainer. What's so bad about a Chikorita, huh? Oh, let me tell you. Powder moves like Poison Powder and Sleep Powder don't work on grass types and Leech Seed doesn't either. Well, I still have Super Mess and Super Sonic, you say. True, except that Super Mess almost went down to Chikorita, so I had no way to set statuses after almost knocking it out. So, cue a painful 30 minute fight of PowerPoint stalling this thing until it ran out of moves and struggled itself to death. Into Lumio City, I want to run into a required fight with Sycamore where he says, and I quote, I'm not that tough. Yeah, okay, dude. His first Pokemon is Chespin, which is the same boat as the Chikorita we just mentioned. I know he had two more Pokemon, so I was quite hesitant to PowerPoint stall it in case he had three grass types. So I swapped into Seismitoad and got lucky with RNG and was able to set up Confusion. Before I did this, I had knocked his defense down with Leer from Machamp. If you don't know this, attack boost and defense drops on a confused Pokemon actually affect their damage to themselves, so it is beneficial to carry Leer in a run like this if you have a confusion move. This wasn't the end of Chespin though. Seismitoad had been hit by a few Vine Whips right before Chespin went down, so I couldn't swap into him safely anymore. Still worrying about power points in the long run, I decided to growl down the Chespin's attack before swapping in and begging the game to not crit, and this actually paid off. And good thing too, I worried about power points because the second Pokemon was Go-Goat. Luckily, Go-Goat didn't have many attacking moves, so I was able to stall out his damaging attacks and then take him down with confusion. Surely, Pokemon 3 wouldn't be grass as well, would it? Oh, of course, all three happen to be grass, you have got to be kidding me. With multiple of my Pokemon being low health, now I couldn't feasibly go for confusion strats, so I needed a power point stall. Luckily, I had identified that I could swap between Machamp and God to be completely immune to its attacks, Trick or Treat and Astonish, as well as be safe from confusion from its Confuse Ray. Unfortunately, I didn't count the power point uses correctly, so I swapped into God right as it started struggling and lost God. As a reward for besting him, he gave us a choice between Purloin, Sill, and Skarmory, which after discussion with chat, we decided to grab Skarmory to replace God due to the defense and typing. On the next route, I picked up a Joltik as my encounter and then ran into a double battle. Double battles kinda suck for status only, and of course they had a grass type. Since we need to stall them, if they focus on one of the Pokemon on our side, these types of battles can be really risky. After taking out Fracture with Leaf Seed and Poison Powder, I paralyzed the Cotton Need to knock it down with Confusion, once again using Leer to make Confusion super OP. The rest of the route went by fast and we unlocked Camp Freer, and one of the most important things for this run. Berry Fields. You see, Berry Fields let us farm Oran or Citrus Berries to make the battling a bit safer if we get hit hard. There actually is more benefit to this though, as you can create mutations, and with these mutations you can get Eevee reducing berries, which we'll get to later. The final important note about the Berry Fields is that if you plant some berries, you can wait some time and they get an encounter here for one more Pokemon. 
Progressing forward, we get a venipede from Route 6 and then clear the chateau and wake the Snorlax, which we capture. After clearing Snorlax, I found one of the biggest blessings of this run, which is a Blissey on Route 7. Since we're not using rare candy for leveling, we need something easy to take down. That would usually put us to Pokemon that give little experience, but Blissey is a major exception to that, being something that does little damage and yields high experience, making leveling much safer. To make it even better, it grants HP EVs, which is a plus for all of our mons. Also on Route 7 is a rival double battle, and hey great, we get someone who can attack since we don't control them. Nope, they died before even taking one of the opponents out, so we're left to do a double battle with only one on our side. Leech Seed made a big difference here to give us healing while playing it extremely safe with the swaps. I also made sure to take down the side that only had one Pokemon, so we turned it into a one-on-one -on -one as fast as possible. In Connecting Cave, we get a Magmortar, which is actually quite nice since it learns a confusing move and smokescreen. I was progressing fine through trainers and almost made it to Amberette Town when I hit a wild Gengar. And I failed to run and it immediately used Vein Luck. This was definitely my fault since I had Skarmory in front to get him more experience, but it didn't actually have a status move that could deal damage, meaning we lost another member. Making things even worse, they missed the capture of the next route since Zatu teleported away. I did manage the catch in the cave past Amperet though, catching a Luxio who had Intimidate, which is a great ability for when you need to stall enemies routinely. And we named it Zira as a reference to Lion King. Further in the cave, we hit a Team Flare member with Darmanitan who is quite notably strong, but it's also fast and kept forcing me out due to knowing Swagger. I took some risks to set up Leech Seed with Celebi which paid off, but he knocked out Snorlax with Fire Fang after swapping him in. I'm fairly certain this was a sheer force Darmanitan due to the damage output. After my team getting destroyed by this Darmanitan, he pulled out an Imbor, and I thought it might be over. After looking through the learn set, I decided I should try to take him out with Super Miss, so I set up Bakro Ring and started protecting between Supersonics. Living up to his name though, I missed like 4 Supersonics, so I decided to Growl instead so I could try for a Leech Seed or Poison Powder, which happened to pay off as I was able to swap out and set up Leech Seed with Ivysaur without taking too much damage, ensuring his demise. Though I did swap right before he cleared a flame charge, and since he was minus 6, I definitely would have lost Ivysaur if I hadn't swapped. And literally the next trainer had to have two Poison Grass Pokemon that my only out was either to Confuse or Stall. Which reminder, my only Confusion Setter is Quad Weak to Grass. So I took a few risks and knocked out the Bellsprout with Confusion, and then painfully stalled down the Roserade till it ran out of power points. The next battle is a double battle where Serena was actually useful and I didn't struggle much, finally clearing the cave. In Ambret, we got a Kecleon from the fossil and an Old Rod from the aquarium. The Old Rod is interesting since we can go back to the chateau and get an extra drill. It also lets us grab a catch in the next town to lodge for a litigant, which was quite awesome for status only. Before tackling the gym, we can go up to Route 10 for an Aya Papa Berry and a capture, which turned out to be Intimidate Crocorock. After eradicating Blissies and getting up to level, I returned for Badge 2. We made it to Grant without fighting a trainer and he wound up being a pushover with Tepic and Groval. Oh, a grass type, a pushover you say? Let's make a clarification. We struggled with grass mons up to this point, but Magmortar is on the team and leveled up he got access to Smokescreen and Confuse Rate, but his ability is more important, which happens to be Flame Body. If something like Groval makes physical contact, it has a chance of getting burned, and that really carried us through this gym. After stomping through some flare grunts and getting to Geosins, we get challenged by Karina. First she throws out a Samurai, which wasn't too bad, but her second mon? Dialga. Oh dear lord, we're gonna die. So that's very scary. But despite it doing tons of damage, having access to Leech Seed and Poison Powder made it much easier to deal with. Lily was also able to set up Confusion since Teeter Dance has 100% accuracy, knocking the God of Time down. The next route encounter happened to be in a Veltal, which I did catch and named Moida, who would wind up being extra strong later. Cave leading to Gym 3 wasn't bad either. The first trainer had a Mew who went down to Leech Seed and we picked up a Talo, proceeding to stomp the rest of the trainers easily, even getting Leaf to evolve into a Venusaur. After tons of story, we challenged our rival who had a Roserade, which I thought we could deal with with Mags, but as it turns out, it does a lot of damage despite us resisting it, so I swapped to Lily and started teeter dancing. And all of that damage was healed since it had Mega Drain and wound up Okoing Sandy. This led me to needing to PowerPoint stall and having most of my members chipped down by it before it went down. 
So, the next Pokemon hopefully isn't nothing but- Oh god, it's a Mewtwo. Luckily, Leech Seed went fur, and Serena kinda threw and barely attacked us with it, mostly trying to copy our stat changes, though Future Sight did almost Oko Super Miss. And a final Pokemon was Meowstic, it was a breeze in comparison. Unfortunately, all this had put my Pokemon essentially at level cap for the gym, so I entered gym 3 and made a lot of risky plays to prevent leveling up past the level cap with my Mons that knew useful status moves. I went into the gym leader with a level 22 of Elto like an idiot, and my other mons not maxed to 34, but somehow came out unscathed due to Karina's team not being very good. Up into the Tower of Mastery and were forced to fight with a single Pokemon who's randomly generated. That's somewhat lucky with Abomasnow having Hellstorm as an ability, Swagger, and Engrave. Though I really misplayed here and wound up boosting it with Swagger letting it take us down. We still got to continue despite losing though, so I rolled that Obama Snow was out and our capture for the town was lost. The next route we pick up Vulpix, which evolves into Ninetales, giving me the first Pokemon across all attempts that had access to will o which was a huge win. See all those pesky grass types we're struggling with? They're susceptible to will o and we resist them. I made it a goal to not lose Ninetales past this point, as it was such a strong benefit to the team. The next section was a breeze despite losing a cast form capture in Azure Bay. There's a tutor in the next city for some status moves which I did take confide from to get rid of Ninetales' last attacking move. Before getting into the gym, we're forced to fight our rival, who actually was a pushover despite having Uxie and Togekiss. The gym trainers were also pushovers for our new team. Ninetales was giving us another major benefit, which was the fact that it's fast compared to the stuff we're fighting, and burning an enemy cuts their attack in half, making it easier for us to tank. This made the way to the gym quite easy. As for the gym leader, well his first Pokemon was Hariyama, and I felt quite confident in clicking Will-O-Wisp to reduce its attack. I haven't mentioned this yet, but even though we can't use items, gym leaders can, and the leader healed up Hariyama a few times. You'd think with the burn this wouldn't be an issue, but it happened to use Belly Drum, and this boost made it extremely scary. I managed to stall it around a bit until it one-shot Super Miss from full health. It also one-shot Lily despite being confused too, but luckily went down to Mags after hitting itself in confusion. Second was Hitmon Lee, who almost one-shot Leaf after a focused energy. Luckily Sleep and Leech Seed got us through it without any casualties though, and the final mon Skiddo went down easily, bagging Badge 4 for a steep cost. So I went and leveled all my box bonds up up Blissies and built up a new team. After grinding, I cleared out the power plant, which wound up being pretty easy. There were some scary Pokemon like a Regice and Electro with a Charge Beam and a Landris, but nothing really proved that challenging through this section, which meant we cleared the way to Gym 5. The trainers in Gym 5 were a tad scarier though, and a random Latias having a Starfberry made it deal a large chunk to Celebi, but we still took it down easily enough. After reaching level cap on Plissies again, I went to fight Clamont, where he embarrassed himself with a Patrat, Charmeleon, and Nidorina. With Badge 5 clear, I went back to grab the Black Sludge, which I had forgotten and prepared for the next leg of the journey. After stopping the rival in Route 14, we pick up a Weezing, making use of our recently acquired Black Sludge, and then destroy a Thunderous Therian. This route is a huge turning point for status only, since it contains the Toxic TM, which most Pokemon can learn. Unlike Poison Powder, Toxic can be used on Grass types, giving us another method of dealing with one of our biggest issues. Even better, it also has the Will-O-Wisp TM, letting a few more members learn it, and making Weezing even better for being able to have both. I was heading backwards for stuff and ran into a trainer with a Spoink, who I severely underestimated. I mean, come on, Spoink. Yeah, it had rest in store, and I couldn't actually take down fast enough to prevent it from resting, which clears its statuses. So that was a totally skippable 30 minute encounter. I had backtracked to pick up leftovers, which I apparently missed, which was also a big boost to the team, making a Veltal much better for stalling. Fishing in Levere Town gets us a Poochiena, and we begin gym number six. I had a very scary encounter with a Cobalia, but luckily Will-O-Wisp made a huge difference since his physical attacker, letting Celebi once again stall with Leech Seed and recover. The actual gym leader was a pushover, only having a Gumi, Litwick, and Bronzor, giving us badge number six. And beating Gym 6 means we need to fight Flair again in the Pokeball Factory, but they turned out to be pushovers. So we picked up an Aerodactyl the next route and got our first Lepaberry before hitting the next town. The Lepaberry will be quite handy later, so that one went to the berry farm for much farming. Dindamil Town wasn't notable, and I headed up to the Ice Cave and got vengeance on another random Chikorita who I could actually poison now with Toxic. And the Ice Cave went by quickly as well, since the randomizer was being pretty kind to us. 
I got a couple more captures, which was Skitty and Heatmore, and made it to Anastar City with Gym 7. Before fighting the gym, we have to take down the rival, and she leads with a Heatran. There is a special thing about this battle, though, which is that it has permanent hell. I hadn't really used the weather moves for my strat, but it was quite nice since it dealt chip damage each turn. It would have been unsafe to try to get Leech Seed up, so it made stalling Heatran out much easier, combined with the fact that my Ninetales had flash fire. Pokemon 2 was Staryu, which fell easily, and then we hit the Kamikaze Bird, namely a Star Raptor with Brave Bird, who was actually quite scary. I swapped in Luxray to get Intimidate off, but still almost got taken down while setting up Toxic. Fortunately, we made it out with no casualties since Moida was really bulky and the last Pokemon was a Pichu. Up to level 52 now, and on to battle for badge 7. Which was a breeze, since I pretty much soloed the Blissey, Darumaka, and Salamence with Moida. Morda was an absolute tank, and I was starting to rely on him a lot due to his bulk and access to Roost, which paired with leftovers made him very difficult to take down. So, with a lot of confidence, I marched into Lysander Cafe and busted the door down to fight Lysander himself. Pokemon 1 was Aggron, which was quite scary, but Will-O-Wisp combined with his learn set just not being good at this level managed to make quick work of him. Next up was a Skun Tank, and I really did not pay attention to my randomizer settings. I had realized throughout the run so far that each Pokemon would have the latest four moves in their learn set by level, so I thought it was quite safe on the Skun Tank. However, there's an option to force high power moves after level 50, which apparently I had checked, so I almost lost my Ninetales due to explosion. Mon 3 was a pushover, but his final Pokemon was a B-Sharp, and this thing did a lot of damage. I almost lost Leaf to it after Iron Head was doing almost half HP and I missed Leaf Seed. Then I almost lost Celebi to it after again missing Leech Seed and almost getting taken down by Night Slash. Since Ninetales had already taken damage, I was cautious to try to set Burn with it. So I proceeded to Power Point stall with Moida for 30 minutes until it ran out of Power Points. I could have swapped in with Zira after, but I was afraid of it having Defiant and being triggered by Intimidate, so I made the decision to sack off Judgment in order to get a safe swap into Nina to get Will-O-Wisp up. Your sacrifice will be remembered. I did manage to get Burn up, but I still needed to stall out of health. Unfortunately, my team was quite low on health from the whole battle, so I made a risky play and swapped to Leaf, got a bit lucky, and managed another turn of Protect for Burn Chip. Luckily, I was faster, so I got Synthesis and the attack drop from the Burn let us survive and finally take Lysander down. That battle could have went a lot worse, and in the end, I only wound up losing one Pokemon, but it scared me and I learned a valuable lesson. The movesets from this point would only get worse, and a lot of trainers would start having more Pokemon, making the need to stall for status damage more dangerous. I can only imagine getting a team of six legendaries and needing to take damage across all of them. So I made the decision to go back and grind EVs. After a ton of time farming berries in the berry farm for EV reducing berries, playing the super training minigames, and manually tallying my EVs, I got everyone up to a full defensive set with only HP defense and special defense EVs. After reviewing one last time and spreading citrus berries, leftovers, and black sludge around, I went back to the Flare Cafe and sought to mop up the rest. The first trainer I came back to had a Meloetta, and while I might have survived before, I could tell the better bulk was already helping out, which the legendary trend continued with Trainer 2 having Thunderous, Trainer 3 having Regigigas, and another one having a Fion. Despite maybe playing a bit too risky against an Altaria and almost losing Cough Cough, my new to the team Weezing, I cleared floor 1 relatively easy without any major challenge. The final fight in the cafe turned out to also be no problem with Solosis and a P-Dub getting destroyed easily. With the cafe cleared, we head back to Geosanch to stop Lysander's plans, and I really don't know how this dude made it this far with a team of Atrico, Fanfi, Radita, and Bonsly. I mean his grunts had stronger Pokemon in every single double battle on the next floor, especially in Battle 3 where some random grunt had a Terrakion. Luckily in these double battles, Serena helps us out, and this time she's actually got somewhat useful Pokemon, making it pretty easy here. Except the Gliscor, who took down her Behemoth, and then Serena clicked Explosion, hitting us too. Fortunately, Cough Cough was really bulky, so the Gliscor went down without any casualties from us. It was pretty funny for her to be disappointed with us going back to the Poké Center after every battle. The bottom floor grunts went down with ease, and then we finally get an encounter with the legendary, which in only the most Pokemon fashion happened to be a Pikachu. Finally, we get to the final fight of the Team Flare events, which is once again Lysander, but he might be at his strongest. After laughing at his rock and roll, he decided to scare me by pulling out a Xerneas against Moida. Luckily, its moveset didn't include Moonblast, so we actually managed to take it down with Moida. 
I did have to swap on his fungus since it couldn't be poisoned, but Cough Cough knew Will-O-Wisp and Little Dude never stood a chance. His final bond, Gardevoir, did do some damage though since it mega evolved. It got pretty close to taking down my Cerebi, but luckily recovery spam was a viable strat, finishing up the Team Flare ovens. With that, we got back to the main stuff and headed towards Badge 8, and on the way picked up a Jirachi in Terminus Cave, who we named Kite since it reminded me of the main character markings of the Da Hack series. I also picked up Mozilla the Brakes and Klefki the Ka Keep and Fishungus the Lantern, who actually had a lot of promise with its stats, moveset, and having Volt Absorb. Okay, you know how the leaders are supposed to be the big honcho in the gym? Yeah, Trainer 1 had a Zacrom, who luckily Celebi countered easily enough. Trainer 2 had a Flygon and Palkia, which Moida just tanked like a boss, and Trainer 4 pulled out a Lugia. Moida was really showing how good it was with his typing bulk and moveset. Double Team Roost and Toxic was really chewing through my enemies at this point. Meanwhile, Wolfric's only scary Pokemon was a Tyranitar, but the best thing it could do voices Morda was Thrash. I mean, his last Pokemon was Servide, not like that could take my Beast of a Veltal down, right? Yeah, folks, that's why you pay attention in your battles and don't get cocky. I thought I had this in the bag and totally missed that Servine was contrary, and it just happened to crit Moida too. If I had played well, I definitely could have saved him here and played Protect more, which really sucked because Moida had been carrying my whole team and now at the end of the game I needed to replace my most valuable member. I really went back and forth on my team here, but eventually decided on Kaki's due to his typing. Luckily, the first trainer on Victory Road wasn't bad, and I picked up a Roserade from the previous route, and as my final capture for the run, I got a Pachirisu. I skipped what trainers I could and pressed forward, and just quite nervous after losing Boida, and forgot one of the things I had learned early on in the run, which was to make sure to keep the front of your party with a Pokemon who was either fast, or could status and survive something that might trap you in. I had Cough Cough in the front who was slow and found a wild Metagross. I failed to run twice and got crit by Psychic, which okoed Cough Cough, who was my next bulkiest member after Moida. So yeah, I was not having a good day. I went back to the boxes and then decided to end stream that day and went through a lot of thought on how to proceed. I just lost my best two members and needed to rebuild a team at the end of the game. After a lot of debate, I came up with Kite, Fishungus, Nina, Leaf, Zira, and Cerebi. While I still needed to clear the victory road, I was also thinking of the Elite Four, and where if I lost a member I could not replace them in between battles. Which is mostly why I ran two grass types, so I had Leech Seed options in case I lost Leaf or Cerebi due to Cerebi's 4x weakness and Leaf not being as bulky. Oh, and yeah, I EV trained again and went back to Berry Farms to get a bunch of Lepas so we could restore power points in between battles in the Elite Four. Victory Road was going quite well and then I had a Rampardos plus p -Dove. Which didn't sound too scary until Rampardos clicked Head Smash into Fishungus, put him into the red, and the P Dove doubled into him with Facade, taking him to 5 HP. Let me just say that the EV training was worth it, and I definitely would have lost a member or two here otherwise. Which made the rival fight much more stressful, especially when they led with a Tyrantrum. I swapped in Celebi since it resisted pretty well and managed to take it down, though Head Smash was doing a lot of damage. Embor was next though, so I was forced out to Fishungus, who actually handled the Embor quite well, especially with Leftovers and Aqua Ring. We got lucky with slot 3 and got Geodude. Or so I thought until it clicked Explosion. Number 4 was Whirlipede, who forced us to swap due to Celebi's 4x weakness to Bug, but Leaf managed to take it down with Leech Seed and Stall. And I breathed a sigh of relief when Riolu came out as the last Pokemon. This fight was one of the scariest going into the victory road due to Serena having 5 Pokemon, and really the rest of the road went stunningly until the exit where we hit a trainer with an Alakazam. My editor, Pretty Chill, actually asked me up front in this run how I planned to deal with Magic Guard if I ran into it and I laughed and said hope that I never encounter it. See, Magic Guard prevents a Pokemon from taking damage from indirect sources. Turns out this applies to Leech Seed as well as statuses like Toxic. Luckily, Kite was turning out to be a great member here with Cosmic Power, making it barely take damage from Alakazam's attacks. So, yet another battle we had to PowerPoint stall out, but the first time we actually encountered Magic Guard across all attempts. With Victory Road down, we finally entered the showdown with the Elite Four. I was extremely nervous here after 7 retries and losing 12 Pokemon, and I really didn't want to restart at the very end of the game. I thought my team through once again and decided to leave it as is, and started the first battle with Mulva. Pokemon 1 was Growlithe, and I kinda ran into a blessing in disguise, but I realized it could also be a curse. 
All the Elite Four members have a couple of full restores. Since status moves will always take their first Pokemon into the red before it goes down, they'll most likely use all their items on the first Pokemon. For Mulva, this was beneficial since Growlithe wasn't too difficult to stall, but if I got something like a Primal Groudon on the first Pokemon, then it would be a huge problem. Pokemon 2 was superior, and after losing Moida to one, I was super nervous, but it seems like this one didn't have Leaf Storm, so it went down from Toxic. 3 was Vaporeon, which is kinda lucky since Status doesn't care about defense values, and its attack wasn't a threat to Leaf. Her final mod was Mankey, banking us the first member down with no casualties. That berry farm grinding really paid off here as I spammed Lepa Berries and a bunch of full restores I bought since I didn't really have much else to spend my money on across the run. Wilkstrom was next, and the first two mods went down easy, which were a Noctowl and Golbat, but the third mod swapped in and turned out to be Mewtwo. Luckily, it mostly had Psychic-type moves though, which we resisted easily with Celebi. And the last member was a Flappy, which meant number two went down with also no casualties. Next up was Drasna, who led with Registill, and despite being super bulky, didn't deal much damage to us, so I used it to set up Cosmic Power Kite while healing on Leech Seed. The stat boost really made a difference, the clicked explosion had dealt all a 12 damage to us. Slot 2 Pansage went down to Toxic, and then in came Cresselia. Two legendaries on Drasna, what luck! Though once again we were able to stall with Celebi due to it not having offensive moves that were great against it and recovery and Leech Seed keeping our HP full. With the last member being Luminion, Fishungus mopped up to take member 3 down. You know what I said earlier about the full restore thing potentially being a curse? Yeah, in the Seabolt, and he pulls out the Alga as the first Pokemon. I had been leading with Kite in these battles due to it having cosmic power access, but I couldn't set up Toxic due to it being still type. But that was completely okay. The randomizer just happened to give it a sticky barb. That said, it did have Earth Power, so I played it safe and swapped to Cerebi to stall with Leech Seed and Recover. Despite Roar of Time doing a lot, it couldn't take us down and didn't get any lucky crits. Protect was really coming into play as well, since I generally tried to protect every other turn after I had something statist across the run. Mon 3 was Shuppet, who Fishungus tanked easily, then a Medicham who missed its high jump kick and fell into defeat. The last mod was Wigglytuff, and despite putting us to sleep, couldn't really touch Kite, meaning all of the Elite Four was down. The final battles here, and a full team of six Pokemon. First up was Fionn, who was a pushover once we got Aqua Ring up. Azelf was number two, and I just felt it deep down that it was gonna click explosion after seeing the learn set, so I managed to tank it well with Jirachi due to resisting it. Next up was Bonsly, meaning we had a free Mon to set up plus six cosmic power with, and she happened to use both her full restores on the Bonsly, absolutely wasting those items. I forgot to mention the last move on Jirachi, which is Wish, meaning not only could we be insanely bulky, but we could heal ourselves which meant staying in to take down the next up Snorunt made it an easy KO. Porygon Z was the next victim of Kite, though it did manage to paralyze us with Zap Cannon, but at plus 6, Diantha really couldn't do much to us. And for the last slot, she mega evolved Latias, which, yeah, that's pitiful damage. So that's the story of how Jirachi is an amazing status only user, and we beat Pokemon Y with only status. Wait, this game has a battle after the credits? Encore time! Except, it wasn't really much of an encore. I swapped to feast Chungus on his Krikatoon and set up Aqua Ring, which paired with Leftovers was excellent recovery each turn, letting Toxic melt through Krikatoon, Cyndaquil, and his final mod, Fletchender, ending the actual true final battle of this run. Would I recommend anyone else do this status-only run? Absolutely not. This was a ton of work between the XP grinding, restarts, berry farming, and EV training. And since it was randomized, every battle was stressful due to not knowing what I would run into. That said, I'm quite proud to have finished it and would like to thank all my viewers who stuck with me through the over 20 streams this took. This run took an enormous amount of effort, so I'd appreciate it if you could drop a like, comment, or consider subscribing for more future runs. If you're interested in seeing more pain but live, go check out my Twitch, or if you want to see more post-pain, I'd suggest my Stadium 2 Except I'm Weak run, which took me almost two years to beat. I'm Glitch the Box Links, and I'll see you in the next Out of the Box Challenge.